All right, so today we're going to start working uh, with particles. So let's go and make a new project. I'm going to call this sprites. And I'll put this in my 2550 folder. And accept. All right. So let's go over a couple things about particles before we actually get into uh, working with them. In Maya, there's two kinds of particles. Uh, one is under the dynamics tab. One is under the end dynamics tab. Okay, so if I go to the dynamics one, this is like the first system of particles that uh, Maya had. So there's several ways to create them. And if I go to, just to show you, if I go to the end particles, this menu is basically going to be, oops, come on, move, move, there we go. Uh, it has some of the similar things in here. Create particles, and I can use a particle tool, particle tool. Create emitter, create emitter, emit from object. Uh, the other one doesn't have a fill object. Uh, which is understandable and then this one has some presets here where the other one doesn't have any presets okay uh, they have some collision stuff they both can do and they have some other attributes as well okay uh, so a lot of these things are going to carry over uh, we're going to work with the old system for this one and then we'll work with the new system for something else all right so uh, particle tool this tool here allows me just to create particles okay so if I just switch my mode so you can actually see this but I'm just clicking, and I can place particles here. I hit enter, and it's hard to see. Let me see if I can find a better view. Let me turn my grid off. Oops. There we go. So you can kind of sort of see, maybe you can see those dots, OK? So those are just particles, so just tiny little dots. That's all they are, OK? And we can do different things with those dots. Um, I hardly ever use a particle tool. Um, some people will use it. Uh, I don't. Uh, this has other things in here like sketching particles where I could just draw particles. Um, it also has, let me go back to that, creating a particle grid. So I can click a couple points and hit enter and it'll create a particle grid. Or I can create, oops, let me go back to my particle grid. There we go. Let's try that again. seem to be working correctly. Uh, there is a way to make like a 3D particle grid, but it does not seem to want to work. All right, so let's go to uh, create emitter. This is typically how you're going to create particles. Okay, with an emitter. So I'm going to open up the outliner. Let me move this over here. Keep that right there. Right here. Let's get this over. Okay, so we have uh, an emitter name we can give it. We can name that later also. And then there's three different kinds of emitters, <clears throat> uh, omni, directional, or volume. So with an omni emitter, and all these things we can change later. So I'm not even going to worry about going back into the options. With an omni emitter, if I were to add some frames, everything dynamic, we have to add frames. And we hit play. Ooh, there we go. You see, uh, excuse me. You see I get particles just kind of shooting out from the center point in a 3D sphere. I don't know if any of these other views are going to be better. Black seems to be the best one. Okay, so you can see how they're just kind of emitting outward. Okay, there's the point, the emitter, and they're spraying out. If I look in the outliner, I have an emitter, and I have particles. So I have two things. The emitter is going to control how those particles are shooting out, and once they're shot out, everything else is up to the particle to figure out what they're going to do after that. Okay, so on the emitter, if I wanted more particles, I can go to my rate, and I can make it like 500. And now I'll have 500 particles per second coming out of here. Uh, some of the other things I can do, uh, let's see, I can change my speed so I can make it go faster. Okay, I can change, uh, some of these things only apply to when you have certain other options selected. I can add a randomness to my speed. So some particles will actually go faster than others. Some particles will go slower. And set that to five and two. Okay, now even though we're not really seeing it, some particles are going, let's say, five miles an hour, and some are going two miles an hour. Okay, or three miles an hour, because this is this random here is basically like a range for this. So it just kind of offsets that a little bit. All right, so that's the emitter. Okay. Um, 
I can play with, that's an omni emitter. I can change this to a directional, and if I hit play, you see how it's only shooting out in one direction. All right, if I come down to here where it says direction, I can turn the X direction off, turn the Y direction oops, on, and that will shoot there. Or I can turn a little bit of X and a little bit of Y on, Come on. and it'll shoot at an angle, okay? So you can play with these different directions to get different results. I believe we can also rotate this. Yes, so you can also rotate it to shoot it into a different direction. It's not really, there's no pointer, so it's kind of hard to see like where is this thing actually shooting at. So you kind of have to eyeball that. I typically don't even rotate it. I'll typically just set it up with my uh, directions here because it's easier to see which direction I want it to go into. Rotate this back to. Oh, there it is. There we go. So now we're going back in the X. All right. There's also a spread. So if I put this to point two, instead of it coming out in a straight line, it'll shoot out like that. Here's our speed. Those things are still in there. There's some tangent and normal speed. Don't worry about those. There's some other stuff here, other stuff there, but don't need to worry about those yet. All right. So that's basically it. There's random direction also, where it'll. I think that's one we can play with. Some of these you just never really use. Uh, random direction, speed random. No, I can't. I can't play with random direction uh, because that one is grayed out because it's a volume speed attribute. All right. So then, if I change this to volume, there we go. So now we get an actual like shape, and they're going to come out of that shape. So where this can be helpful is, let's say I have um, a different shape. Let's say I have a cylinder. So let me pick a cylinder from my attribute editor. Let me make sure I'm oriented right. I feel like I'm like upside down. There we go. I was upside down. And then let me choose the direction. <laughs> Instead of it going along or away from the axis, I'm going to make it go along the axis. So now if I hit play, oops, why aren't you going along the axis? Oh, because I have random direction on right now. Let's turn that back to zero. Hit play. And you can see how it's shooting in this direction. And then I can add a little bit of randomness to that. There we go. And now we're starting to get a little bit of spread happening. Okay. So imagine that this is a uh, airplane and we're shooting this stuff out the back of the airplane to kind of give us smoke clouds or whatever it is. Uh, directional speed, I don't play with that. Uh, and then there's some other stuff here. Some of the stuff is like really not really advanced stuff, but it's pretty advanced stuff. Okay. Uh, then there's also this, which is kind of neat scale rate by speed or by size. So if I take this and I say play, okay, it's going that size. But then if I scale this down like that, you can see that as it's smaller, we're getting less particles. So we can adjust that too, and if we had different size objects, we may want different sized uh, particles. Okay, so sometimes you can play with that. All right, so that's basically the emitter. Okay, and that's essentially what it's going to do. There's a couple other options if you go back to the emitter. Um, there's a um, surface emitter, and then there's a curved emitter. We'll get to what those are, um, and another assignment. So let's go to our particle. And typically the particle stuff is better to edit the attribute editor than the uh, channel box. So in here is dynamic. So we turn that off, they don't move, okay? Particles are no longer active. And a lot of dynamic things will have this is dynamic property because you may want to turn it off because you're done calculating it. Conserve is conserving the speed, okay? This is an important one which we'll see. If I hit play, you see that now they're not really shooting. What's happening is they're basically coming out, and then because there's nothing else interacting with it, it's not going to conserve its speed that it had when it shot out of here, so it just stops. So you see them kind of shooting out and then just stopping. And as we take this up higher and higher, they're going to conserve less speed every frame. Okay, so eventually we'll get this clustering. And this is a very uh, sensitive one. 
where if you go too high or too low on this, you don't get anything. Like you see at point two, we hit play, we barely get anything. We go up to point nine eight, and we get a nice little stream of these, and then they start to kind of slow down and start to bunch. All right, so that's one we're definitely going to be playing with. Um, this next one, which is not a little detail, uh, inherit factor we'll see later. In this instance, it's not really going to help us. Uh, live forever. Okay, each particle has within it a, its own lifespan. So if I go here and I say constant range, what this does is it sets my particle's life to only living for 30 frames or 24 frames, depending on what my frame rate is. Let me go to my preferences, and right now I'm set to real time 24 frames per second. So each particle is only living for 24 frames. Okay, and then it dies off. And you can see there is this like kind of like sphere of where these things are ending and it makes it look very unrealistic. So typically we would go in here and make a random range. And let me stop it, play again. And then I would give it a little bit of randomness. So now some are gonna live maybe to two seconds, some of them aren't gonna live at all because they just will die off before they're even born. Uh, the lifespan here we can just make like three seconds. So now it's going to shoot out for three seconds with a random range of half a second. Okay, or we can lower that down to two. Okay, so a lot of these settings are basically you play with them and then you make sure it looks good out here. Uh, there's also a lifespan PP, which is lifespan per particle. Constant was the first one we played with. And live forever means that they're never going to die. They're just going to be around forever. And in some cases you want that. Um, for what we're going to be doing for this assignment, we don't, okay? Um, there's some time attributes, there's some collision attributes, some soft body stuff, goal weight stuff. We're not on those yet. Some instancer stuff, which eventually we'll get to. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, render attributes here. This is an important one because it's going to pick what we want to see. Right now we're seeing points. If we choose multi-point, instead of one single point, we get a bunch of points. If we go to multi-streak, we're going to get streaks. If we choose numeric, we'll actually get the particle's number. Every particle has with it a number identifier, and that's the number for this one, that's the number for that one. And we have spheres, so we can have these things actually render. If I hit five, we can see them rendering spheres. We can go to sprites, which is eventually what we're going to be working with. Sprites are just cards, and if you look at them, they're always going to be facing the camera. Okay, so a lot of video games would use sprites for animation a long time ago. Basically, we would take a card and put an animated uh, picture on it. And then you would think that that's just like a mushroom walking across the board, but it's really just a picture of a mushroom walking across the board. Uh, there's regular streaks, just like multi-streak, except for just one. There's blobbies, there's clouds, and there's tubes. Okay. Now these ones that have SW next to them will render in the Maya software renderer. So if I hit the render button here, here is a tube. If I switch this to blobby, <coughs> that's blobby. If I switch this to multipoint, nothing happens. Okay. Uh, mental ray will render these. So if I switch to mental ray and hit render, can I wait? All right, so there it goes. So it just took a little while to figure out what I wanted to do. Right now that it's figured it out, then we have those. All right, so they will render through Mental Ray. They just won't render through uh, Maya software rendering, uh, which is fine. Okay. Um, and then the, each one of these has their own set of options. Okay. So like Multipoint has different options than Sprites, than Numeric, than all these other ones. And we get to those options by clicking this button. Okay. It doesn't want to show all of them because it's actually a lot of stuff. So if we're doing multi-point, or actually just do multi-streak, that's a cool one. We'll hit the current render type, and then it'll load in all the things that are specific to multi-streak. So here's all the stuff for multi-streak. I can play with the count, how many uh, particles are in there. If I can take it back down to one, then it's just a single one. If I can pull this up. I can pull the radius up. 
I can change their uh, normal direction, which will do something you don't need to worry about right now. I can change their tail size. I can tell it to use lighting. I can tell it to do color accumulation. Okay, and then we can get some really cool effects using um, these kinds of things. Okay, so it's multi streak, multi point, and click current render type, and then here's some more stuff. Uh, it doesn't have tail size, obviously, but it has still the multi count, still the multi radius, still the point size. Okay, depending on what we're trying to do. Uh, there's blobby, current render type. This one has a radius and it has a threshold. If I take this threshold up and then I render this, what's going to happen is it's going to actually try to blend the particles together to create kind of this uh, kind of liquidy, gooey kind of shape. And I'm just going to add a bunch more particles just so you can kind of see that a little bit better. So let's go to... 1200 particles. It's easier to type. All right, there we go. So now let's see this. So you can see how they're kind of collecting together. Before, they were just spheres. Now as I increase this, they collect together and start forming into a shape. Into a gooey, kind of watery, kind of shape. And that's how we used to do like really cheesy looking liquids a long time ago. All right, and then there's other ones too we can play with <laughs> as well. Uh, render stats, visible and reflections, visible and refractions, cast shadows, receive shadows, motion blur, private visibility. So right now, these two being unchecked, if I had a piece of glass in front of this and it was refractive, it would not see the particles. If I had a mirror right next to this, it wouldn't see the particles. So we have to make sure we turn those things on if we want those kinds of things to happen. Um, here are per particle array attributes. So in here I can define certain things. Like I can go to color and make a per particle uh, attribute. And I can right click on this and say create ramp. And this is a common thing that we're going to do. Let me rewind it. Hit play. And now you can see that the particles are coming out. Red at the beginning, green, and then blue because I've connected it to this ramp, red, green, blue. And I can obviously move my colors around and then replay this and get different results, okay? So a lot of particles are just connecting things together and playing with all of these different settings to get that kind of stuff set up, all right? So we're just gonna take it into a very, very simple stage of um, just being able to create sprites and just manipulate the sprites um, and get them to, you know, do a little something part particularly, particularly. I'm making up words. Let's go to create text. And I'm just going to create a letter. Okay, you can create a word, you can create a letter, I don't care. I'm doing a bevel. And the settings here should be pretty straightforward. Uh, everything else is good. There's my letter. Yes. Beautiful. I can come into the Bevel Plus options in the Astro Editor, go to my outer style curve, and pick a different profile. I'm not a big fan of the profile that we were just on. I think that one's probably better. There's also this other one, which is kind of cool, but uh, like that one's kind of cool. There. And then that one's kind of cool also. A nice little thing to it. All right, I'll leave it at that one. We'll just see what it looks like. We can change it later if we decide we want to change it later. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a curve. Well, actually, the second thing because we already did the first thing. So let's go to Create CV Curve Tool. And I'm going to go to my four views. So let's hit the four view. Okay. And I'm just going to draw in this view here around and then in this view I want to start moving upwards because I want to do like an upward spiral I'm going to middle drag to pull that up and then draw a little bit more and then middle drag to pull it up and draw a little bit more middle drag to pull it up middle drag to pull it up and I think about there is probably good okay so I'm just going to click a couple points there all right so I've created basically like this 
whipping thing of these particles are going to come out and they're going to zip around here and then they're going to zip up. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust the curve, just right clicking and going to control vertex. And this is too high, I'm going to bring that down. Let's get there, let's pull this here. I'm just trying to get there's a good amount of elevation, a good amount of movement on here. We can adjust all this stuff later too. But uh, I like to get just a good starting point and then working from there. We'll start off low and then whip up. And I like to start this kind of like in a hidden area so we don't see it just like bam all of a sudden it's there. <clears throat> and I think maybe this point should be over here like that. There we go. All right, so that's sufficient enough. We can, like I said, adjust it. Mm, I want to have this guy in the back Just get down right there. That way I can see him through here. There we go. All right, so like I said, we can play with that later if we need to. All right, so we're going to create an emitter. So I'm going to go to my particle menu, not the end particles. Okay, those are a different beast. Go to the regular particle menu, go to uh, create emitter option box. We're going to pick an omni emitter and then we're going to hit create. There's my emitter. So now I want to take this emitter and animate it along this path. Okay, now obviously I could hand animate this, but it'll take me forever to do. And it doesn't give us any ability to tweak things. So I'm going to go to my animation menu, I'm going to go to animate. With both things selected, the emitter, shift click, the curve, animate menu, motion paths, attach to motion path. And I'm going to make sure it's set to not time slider right now because if you look at my time slider, it's only 24 frames. Uh, I can set it to time slider, I just have to make sure I set this up to a higher value. So I'm going to set it to time slider. Um, that way it'll do 1 to 250. Or I can just type in 1 to 250 here if I didn't want to set that. Uh, follow is good, good, everything else is good. Okay, default settings, uh, except for the start and end, 1 to 250, or time slider, whatever. All right, so we're good here. We're just going to hit attach. Oops. All right, so I'm going to rewind my thing. You'll see that my emitter has jumped to the curve. So now if we were to hit play, let me switch my mode again, I'll switch it to black so we can see it, hit play, you see that now the emitter is following our curve all the way around. I get to the top, Bloop. there it is, okay. So what we want to do now is we have to tweak those settings. Obviously uh, those aren't going to be good settings for playing stuff. So I'm going to grab the particles. And I'm going to do this. Don't do this. I'm just changing my uh, points here to spheres just so you guys can see it. And then I'm just going to take my current render type of the spheres and take them down to 0 0.02. So now you can at least see the spheres or see the particles. A little bit harder to do before. All right. So now we hit play. And they go all over the place. Okay, so we need to have more control over them. So I have the emitter selected, and I'm going to change the speed of the particles to maybe 0.25. So we rewind, we hit play. And you can see that now we get this nice little trail happening where they're not just going all over the place. Okay, so that's step one is just setting the speed to something that's reasonable. I mean, a little bit of randomness to it also, maybe 0.125. There we go. 
okay? Now I want these things to look like there's a little bit of gravity to it. So as they're like shooting out, they're moving down slightly, not crazy, but slightly. So I'm going to grab the particles. I'm going to go to fields. There's several fields. There's a fields here. There's a fields there. Either one is the same one, so it doesn't matter. So we're just going to add gravity to this. Okay, particle selected, go to gravity, and now we have this gravity node that is just going to be uh, gravity pulling on our objects. So I rewind, I hit play, it's going to be too strong, I know. You can see that they're just dropping now. So if I grab the gravity and I put this down to 2, the magnitude to 2, maybe a little more, or a little bit less, 1, Okay, even less, 0.25 or 0.285. There we go. That seems more, I don't know, this is pixie fairy dust. That seems more likely to have something like that. Okay, so that's probably good there. Again, all of these settings we can adjust. That's the cool thing about dynamics, that we're never really like locked into something until we you know, get to those final stages. Okay. So now we have this, it's flowing good. I'm gonna grab the particles again, and I don't want them to live forever where these things are just falling down forever. I'm gonna take their life and make it a random range. And I'll do it in the attributor so you can see it better. Make this random range, and we'll give it maybe a second and a second, or two seconds and one second. Okay, it's actually moving pretty slow, which I don't like about that. Um, let's go into our emitter. So let me go to the outliner. I'm going to grab the emitter, and down here in the bottom of the emitter, there's a motion path. Okay, and if I come to my channel box, here is these, uh, or this attribute editor, the keyframes for these. So I'm going to right click on any one of these and go to this top value. And then that will take me to where the motion path is. That's what I want to get to. So I click motion path. And this is how I set this up. Okay, this is how the uh, emitter is following the curve is by this value. So if I right click and I go to this top one, I can change this instead of this being at 250 at the end, I can change it to 150. And so now what that means, I rewind, I hit play. And you can see we're going a bit quicker. And that's what we want there. Okay, that's a bit quicker, I like that. Um, let me hit select on here, and I'm going to go in the graph editor. If I hit F, you can see here's my graph for the animation of that. Okay, And if you look at this, we start off kind of slow. You know, We're at frame 30 before it even got around the corner. And then when it gets to the end, it slows down also. I don't want it to slow down at the end. I want it to basically just go one constant speed the entire time. So I'm going to grab this and hit this linear button. And now when I rewind it and play it, we get one constant speed the entire time. There we go. That's what we want to happen. Okay. Obviously, we're going to need more particles. So let's go back to our emitter. And let's just you know, let's say triple the rate. That's looking better. All right, that's good. Uh, I want to also add on here a little bit of turbulence. So I'm going to go back to fields. Let me switch this to my dynamic menu. Fields, add a little bit of turbulence. And I like to take the attenuation off. That's the, the feathering, basically. And I'm hitting play, and you can see it just going crazy. So let's take the magnitude down. There we go. So that looks pretty neat uh, how it's doing that. I like that. All right. Now, there's another thing that's bothering me with this. Let me change this to maybe 200. OK. As these things whip around the corner, there's no like reaction to it. These particles, if they're this emitter is whipping around the corner, these particles should go kind of flying a little bit. Just a little bit, not crazy. So if I grab the particles, that's where this inherit factor comes in. If I hit 1 on this, which is a range from 0 to 1, 
I rewind to hit play, it's going to go crazy. Okay, it's basically inheriting the entire movement of the particles around the entire curve. But a little bit of this, like 0.2 maybe, will go a long way. So you can see how it looks like they're kind of being pushed outward as it whips around the corner. Now here's going to be the greatest part. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but let's go to our emitter. We know the emitter at 150 hits the top. So I'm going to go in here at 149. And I'm going to set a key on the right. I'm going to go up a frame. Set this to zero. Right click on the rate. Set another key. Okay. So now what's going to happen is the rate just goes off. Just no more particles being emitted after 150. So now let's play it. Now watch what happens at the top, which is very cool. See how we get this little overshoot there, where they kind of uh, come up and they go, boo! So let's go back to particles. I think I want a little bit more inherent factor, maybe 0.3. There we go. That's better. Okay. And I can also adjust my conserve, if I can find it, there it is, maybe 0.98. Okay, and because I adjusted my conserve, I may have to add a little bit more inherit factor, and I think I do. Okay, the conserve is just going to kind of slow them down a bit quicker. There we go. So that is awesome. Let's watch it again. Wonderful. Okay, cool. So now that we have the motion of the particles right to a point, we can still come back and tweak things. I can tweak the path of the curve. I can tweak what the particles are going to look like eventually. Uh, that's be the next step. Uh, I can adjust my gravity field. I can adjust my turbulence field. I can adjust the emitter's rates. I can adjust the speed of the emission. There's lots of different things. Keep a listing of all the things you adjust. That way you know, okay, if I want to adjust these, these are the five or six or seven or eight attributes that I played with in order to get it to look like this. Okay, so let's go back to an area where we can see these things like that. And I'm just going to grab the particles and go to Control A. And we're going to make these sprites. So go down to sprites. Now we have a bunch of pictures. Okay, I'm going to hit current render type. And if I look at this, I can adjust the scale of these. So I can make this like 0.1 and 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. Okay, I can twist them. Okay, and one of the boring things about it is it's doing it all uniformly. Okay, we don't want it to do it uniformly. Also, we don't have a picture yet. Let's go get a picture so we're not looking at this boring gray stuff. Before we leave Maya, let's go and save. So we'll call this sprites. Animation, Sarcona, version 01. So now we're going to go into Photoshop and we're going to create the little image that we're going to have on there. All right, so we're in Photoshop. We're going to go to File New and we're going to make a little texture. Okay, now this texture is going to be repeated for as many particles as we have. So we don't want to go with something like 1024 by 1024 because that's a lot of different images being loaded. Obviously, if we had something that needed that kind of resolution, we would need to go to that resolution, but we don't. So let's go to uh, 128, actually, let's go 256 by 256, okay? We can store a little bit of data in there, and if we need to, we can always scale it down. All right, so every version of Maya, they're going to change this, okay? So I want you to see the process of kind of playing with this until we get the correct thing. So the first thing we need to do is we have to create what the image is going to look like. Okay, and the image is pretty simple. I'm going to gradient. I'm making sure it's a radial gradient. I'm set to use the foreground and background colors, which are these two. Uh, I want this to be a black and white. Okay, so I'm going to just drag in a couple of guides. There we go. We snap there. We snap there. I'm going to click from the center and hold. Hold down Alt. I don't need to hold Alt. That's something else. I'm going to hold Shift and drag it to about the edge. And that's what we get there. 
Okay. And then I think I'm going to invert it. I think it wants me to invert it. All right, so this is going to be the coloring of our object. Now we need to create a gradient or a uh, shape that's going to be our sparkly shape. So I'm going to go to new layers and make a new layer. I'm going to go in with my brush. I'm going to go to where they have these pictures and I'm going to try to find a sparkly one um, that they have in here. If you look at these ones, here's a little sparkle type thing, I think. Okay, I make the brush bigger. Okay, it's not a sparkle, but you can see what it does. It does that kind of thing. Okay, let's go here and see if we can find a sparkle. I have blood in here. I don't see a sparkle though. All right, I may need to come up to my tools here and go in with one of these things. There's special effects brushes. I believe those are them. Append. Right, without the special effects ones. Alright, I did have them in here, I just couldn't see it very good. There it was. Okay, so find your sparkly thing. And I'm just going to click a couple times so we can see it. There it is. So now that I have that in there, I'm going to control click it and then go to select, save selection hit OK. I'm going to hide this layer so I don't need to see it. And now if I look at my channels, I have an alpha channel with that image on there. Go back to my layers, there's that. Okay. So ideally when these two things are put together, we should have something nice. Now I may have switched these backwards and this may have to be black and white the other way, and this one may have to be black and white the other way, but we'll see. Okay. So let's save this to our folder, D drive here, 2550 work uh, sprites source images we save it as an if no nope, we save it as a tiff sorry uh, because ifs don't allow us to save alpha channels so we have to save it as a tiff with the alpha channel sprite image hit ok ok we come back into Maya and we simply just put a Lambert on this so I go to assign favorite material Lambert I click on the map button for the color, go to file, click on the folder, find my sprite image, and there it is. Gorgeous. Okay, and you see that we get this little bit of variation to it, and that's what we wanted to have. But I can see straight through the center of that. I don't think I wanted that. Yes, because it's black in the middle. I don't want that. So let me go back to my channel, and I have it clicked. I'm going to go in with a regular brush and shrink it down. Oops. I, mean, I dropped some of this white, so I can just fill that in. There we go. And I'm actually going to feather this a little bit. It looks like a little bit too hard. There we go. So something like that, okay? And then I'm also gonna paint, this is just me being picky, I don't like these things being right at the edge. So I'm just gonna go in with a soft brush and just get rid of some of these streaks that are just going a little bit too far or too close to the border. All right, and that should be sufficient there. All right, so let's go back to save as a TIFF. Sprite image. No layers, just alpha, just as a copy, save, OK, OK. Back to Maya, back to our Lambert, back to our file, back to reload, and there we go. All right, so now we have an image in here. Now it's not going to be pretty yet, but it will be once we're done with it. You'll notice that the Lambert, when we put, put the file in there with transparency, that it connected it to transparency also. So it saves us some time. If it didn't, well, then we just click the map button, go to file, folder, and then grab that image. Oops. Or that doesn't work. We can just go to the hypershade, click our Lambert, click the map button, 
and then just middle drag this onto here, the file onto the Lambert, and say transparency. And then it'll read the transparency from here and drop it in there. Now we're good. All right, so there's our particles, okay? So now we have to add something to them because really, uh, realistically, they look pretty boring. They're just basically all the same shape, all the same size, all the same rotation values, all the same color, okay? So we want to adjust some of those properties. So I'm going to grab my particles again. And then under the particle shape node, remember we have these sprite scale X and Y, and we have this sprite twist, okay? Well, we can change all this stuff per particle, okay? And that's where these things down here, these per particle array attributes come in. So here's position, ramp position, velocity, and so on and so on and so on. So I'm going to go to the general tab. And in the general, under the add dynamic, you may have to open that up. There is a particle tab. And in here, there's a couple sprite ones that are already created. Here's sprite scale per particle. I'm going to hold the control key. Sprite scale um, XPP, sprite scale YPP, sprite twist PP. That's all I want. I hit OK. And now I have Sprite Twist, Sprite Scale, Sprite Scale XPP. So I'm going to do what's called an expression on this. An expression allows me to basically write a mini program, okay, or a mini script that controls what these things are doing. So I'm going to right click. We'll do the twist first because the twist is kind of easy. We're going to do the twist first. So I'm going to right click and do a creation expression. Okay. There's three different kinds of expressions that we can do for this. A creation expression is right when it's born or created, it has this value. These runtime ones are what's going to happen after it's born. So creation expression. Uh, what was that? I don't know why this popped up. <laughs> Let's try that again. Sprite twist, creation expression. What? Uh, apparently there's an external editor for expressions or I set something up. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we'll find out. This is new to 2014, let me tell you. Um, so let's go here and say particle shape one dot sprite twist pp and let me make this big and bold there we go okay lowercase everything except for the first letter of the second words okay or second and, and third and fourth and fifth um, so particle is all lowercase the s in shape is capitalized the sprite is lowercase, the twist is capitalized, the PP is capitalized. So I'm going to basically put in here what I want the rotation values to be. So I'll say 45. Okay, so I put this sprite twist per particle is equal to 45. I can save it. I get an error. Sprite twist PP. All right, let me go a different way. I don't like that way. Let me go to animation editors, expression editor. Value is out of range. All right, let me fix mine. I'll be back. All right, so I deleted my preferences, and <laughs> and now it works. So right-click on the sprite twist PP creation expression, and this pops up. That's what we want. And at some point, I guess uh, somewhere in here, you can actually turn that on the edit somewhere else. But I don't. It wasn't working. Editor. There you go. Text editor. So probably that was clicked, and I couldn't get back to it. Whatever. All right, so I'm going to highlight this name in here. That's the name we want to edit. I'm going to middle drag it down here, and I'm going to put it equal to 45, and then hit Create. Okay, so now if we were to rewind and hit Play, you can see that all the particles are coming out with a uh, rotation of 45 degrees. Okay. So I can get back to that by right clicking here, going back to creation expression, or changing this up here to by expression name and then clicking on the expression that I wrote. Okay, so no big deal, hit play, there they go, they're all rotated to 45 degrees. Now like we wanted before, we could have just done that by 
uh, playing with this sprite twist. We want each one to have their own. So I'm going to put in, and I'm going to go to WordPad, and I'm going to copy this so you can see it. And then paste it. Okay, so that's what our original script is sprite shape one dot sprite particle shape one dot sprite twist pp equals 45. So our new expression is we want it to be random. So we're going to type in rand start parenthesis zero comma 360 and parenthesis. So this is going to give us a random number for each particle from zero to 360. So one particle might be rotated 12. One particle might be rotated 212, okay? So we'll copy that, we'll paste it in here. I'll edit it, we'll rewind it, we'll hit play. And now we can see that each one of the particles is rotated differently, and that's exactly what we wanted, okay? And it's very easy to do, we just type it in. That rand function that we have here is gonna be used a lot, okay? So that's pretty simple to do uh, to set it up so that we get some random rotation at the beginning of this but what we want to do is also have it rotate afterwards uh, as well okay so uh, what we can do is if I just go into sprite twist PP and I right click and I go to runtime before dynamics and I highlight this and middle drag it down and I'm just going to copy this. There we go. And then what we can do is we can say, okay, well, this is its creation expression. So we'll go creation expressions. And we'll even do a little bold right there so you can see it. or dynamics okay so the next one is going to be a particle shape twist VP and what we want to do is just move it just add basically add one to each one of these so if I go to particle shape one that's right twist PP and I just say plus one what it's going to do is it's going to say okay let's as an example let's pretend that our first particle got a rotation of zero because it's possible so it comes in zero, okay? And then after it's born, it goes to frame two, and then it says, okay, well now I'm gonna take what I originally had, zero, I'm gonna add one to it, and so now for frame two, my rotation is gonna be one. And then frame three happens, and it's gonna have, say, okay, my rotation now is two, or is one, so I'm gonna add one to it, and that will give me two. So then I'll have two for frame, the next frame, Add one and it'll go to three. Okay. Just copy that. And we'll just paste that there. Hit create. And now as we rotate or rewind and play, you can see it's subtle, but it is there. I'll exaggerate a little bit of putting it to five. Okay, instead of one, it'll be five. So you'll really see it spinning but they're all spinning, okay? And they're all spinning, again, five units. So now let's say we wanted this to be a little bit more random. We wanted some of these particles to rotate one unit every frame. Some of these we want to rotate two units. Some of these we want to rotate uh, backwards one unit. Some we want to rotate backwards two units. How do we do that, okay? So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna set up a separate um, attribute inside here, okay? So this is our particles we have selected. This is our per particle array. I'm gonna go click general and I'm gonna create a new uh, particle attribute. It's called random twist. Okay, so I just type in random twist. And then Maya wants to know what kind of attribute it is. It's a per particle attribute. And it's gonna be a float, which is what we want. So random twist, float, per particle, okay. If it doesn't show up in here, which it did right here, you hit select or you reselect these and then it does show up. So I'm gonna right click on this and go to creation expression. You'll notice that it pops open the same window I typed in my other stuff in, um, our other expression, that's fine. We can leave it all right in here 
and it's acceptable and preferred to keep all your expressions together. So again, we'll go to particle shape one dot random twist equals random negative four to positive four. Okay, so let me copy that and paste it so you can see it. Particle shape one dot random twist equals rand negative four comma four. We always end each line with a semicolon. That way Maya knows where each line of coding is ending. Uh, make sure all your typing is exactly the way it showed up inside here. So lower cases and upper cases are exactly the same. Get a pair of binoculars if you can't see that very good. So let's go here, hit edit. Okay, and we're not going to see anything happen. If I hit play, we're basically getting the same exact rotation we had on the other one. But now what we can do is we can go to our other expression, the sprite twist pp, and go to the runtime before. And instead of adding it to 5, we can just add it to our random twist. I don't need to type in the whole name because I'm actually like on the attribute, so I can hit edit. So that new expression would be plus random twist. Okay, so now we edit it, we rewind it, we hit play, and we can see in here that some of these are spinning one way and some of these are spinning another way. And if we wanted to change that, we go back to our random twist creation expression, and we say, just to exaggerate this even more, negative 20 and 20, edit, rewind, play, and then you can really see these things spinning in different directions, which is the point of it. Okay, I'm going to go back. I liked it at maybe, let me see it at 6. Your number is going to be different from mine, so you can't go exactly on my numbers. All right, that's acceptable. I like that. Okay, and again, we can change it right there. We decide we have too much or too little, whatever. Okay. So there's our expression, and I ended up going with negative 6 and positive 6. All right, so that's our expression so far. Um, and that's just for the rotation, right? That's just to get them to twist. That's all that's doing. So now we need to play with our uh, scale. And we basically need to do a similar type thing to the scale, OK? So let's go here, and we'll go to our sprite scale YPP first, and we'll do a creation expression. So we're just going to say, let me type it in here so you can see it, particle shape one dot sprite scale ypp equals, and then we'll do the same kind of thing. Obviously not zero to 360, we're dealing with something that's maybe uh, 0.5 to, I don't know, two. Let's just try that and see where that gets us. Okay, now of course we have two attributes, right? We have x, oops, and y so let's just change this one to an x pp and we'll copy this and we'll paste it in there we'll edit it we'll rewind it and obviously two is going to be way too much yeah look at that all right so let's just change this down to uh, 0 0.1 let me see what it's at up here it's 0.2 there so 0 0.1 and yeah, maybe 0 0.2 or maybe even 0 0.05 So that would be point zero five and point two. What I have it set to? Yes. Okay. All right. So now we rewind. We hit play. There we go. Okay. Now here's the new problem that we're going to have is if we look at these, they're not proportionate anymore. You can see that some of these, like this guy here, is very flat in one direction and very long in another direction. All right. And that's because what's happening is for each one of the particles, it's going through and picking up. It's picking up a random twist, which is fine. Or sorry, a starting twist, picking up a random twist amount. It's picking up a random scale in the y direction, then picking up a completely different random scale in the x direction. Okay, so it basically it's just getting confused. So the way we alleviate this 
is we're going to create what's called a variable. So we're going to say float dollar sign uh, random scale equals rand 0 0.05 comma 0.2. Okay. Now this might scare you. I don't care. Get over it. Uh, but this is basically setting up to say I want to create this random uh, attribute that has that random value in it. Then I can take this random value in it, kind of like a holder, and I can assign it to here. So I can say is equal to random scale. Random scale. Okay. So basically, create a new attribute called random scale and give it a random value between 0 0.05 and 2, or 0 0.2. And then whatever value it comes up with, it assigns it to both the x and the y directions. Okay. Let's copy that. Let's replace those and hit edit. I typed everything correctly, which is good. Hit play. And now what we see is all of these are proportionate. They're exactly square. Some are small, some are big. That's what we want. Beautiful. Okay. And they're still twisting, which is exactly what we want as well. Okay. So now we can go through and do a little bit of a scaling operation on them. The scaling operation is not terribly difficult. Right click on one of these and go to creation expression or uh, runtime before dynamic expression. So particle shape one dot sprite scale YPP. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the exact scale it's at right now. And we're going to multiply it times 0.99. Okay. Now what this is going to do is let's pretend that its scale is at 5. Okay. I'll bring up calculator so you can see this. If the scale is at 5 and then it's going to come through and multiply it times 0.99 for the next scale. You see how it just increments it and now it's a little bit smaller. And then it's going to multiply that in the next frame by 0.99 and it'll be a little bit smaller. And every frame it's going to multiply by 0.99, eventually making it super duper small. Okay? So that's what our goal is in this, is to do just to do that. So let's copy that line. And we'll paste it for the next one. So we have a X and a Y. Paste it in there. We'll edit it. I get an error here, and it says uh, attribute or variable not found. Sprite scale YPP uh, because I typed sprite shape and not particle shape. That's why. So shape. Nope, still wrong. Particle shape one. That's pretty scary. Let's go back to this. There we go. So I took it that time. I had something obviously typed wrong. So now as we hit play, okay, you can see that they are getting a bit tinier as they go. Okay, and it might not be terribly obvious, but let's go through and maybe make this 0.98, and we'll get that to happen a little bit quicker. The lower this number is, the quicker it's going to shrink. Five. All right, just make sure it's working. Point five. Oh, that's why. See, I set the Y here and the Y here. I have to set the X here. Oops. So I set the Y to both of these. One of these has to be the X is to the X, the Y is to the Y. So X, 
X. There we go. There we go. Now that's making much more sense. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's go back to 0.95. And then play it. There we go. Now we see this nice little trail, these things falling off. Gorgeous. Let me just make it 0.98. So we don't want them to die off before we even get to see them. A bit of fun in that. There we go. Now that is a beautiful thing. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, that's my scale, runtime after. So I think I'm going to go back to my original of 0.99. Yes, gorgeous. Okay, now we're on our last ish, last ish step, which is uh, coloring them. Okay, so we're going to go down to color, and you might get kind of messed up on this, but it's fine. Save your work now, and then you can always come back to the spot and redo it if you need to. So we're going to add color. We're going to add a per particle attribute, and then hit add. Okay, we can't add a shader to this because we already did. If we added a new shader, our particle stuff will be gone. So now we're basically going to color that shader. So if I come in here, I should have inside here an RGB PP, and I don't. So I hit select, and now it shows up RGB PP. So I'm going to right click and go to create ramp. Now I'm going to show you the default. Okay, so don't click anything right now. Just watch what I'm going to do, and then we're going to jump back and do it the correct way. Okay, if I just click on OK here, And I go and edit this real quick. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, make sure six is hit. I hit play. There we go. Okay, so what's happening is all the particles at the very start are red. And then they go to this orangey color, they go to the greeny color, they go to this green blue color, they go to blue, and then they die off. Okay? It's pretty boring. Alright. Even though it might be exciting to look at the rainbow just melt away. It's pretty boring. Alright. So what's happening here is that it's basically starting at the bottom of this ramp. This is where the particles are born. They get this color halfway through their life, around 50 or so. They get that color. And right before they die, they get blue. Okay. So if you see some particle that's blue, you know he's on his way out. So what we're going to do is, um, let me go back to that. I'm going to right click and I'm just going to, come on. I'm gonna right click and break the connection here and I'm going to redo it. So create ramp option box and we're going to do this a little bit fancier. So the uh, all right, take a second to collect my thoughts. Uh, the input V here is going to be RGB VPP. The input U is going to be the particles age. Okay, And we're going to connect this to a new ramp. So the particle's age is going to be the U of the ramp, meaning the left to right area is going to be that. The input V is going to be the RGB VPP. And then we're going to make a new ramp. Okay. So we made it. Uh, I think I did anyway. Yes, I did. It's just not loading, so I hit select. There it is. So now I can right click, click here, and then click to edit ramp. All right. So now we rewind and we hit play. And now we'll notice that all the particles are red. Okay, so what's happening in this situation are all the particles are getting this color here because there is no VPP. Okay, the VPP attribute is, let me jump to Photoshop. Uh, all right, if I were to take a box here. And I went with a gradient, and I grabbed this gradient just because it has three colors in it. Oops. And for some reason, I made oh, there we go. All right, so this has three colors in it. Doesn't matter what colors are in this example. Okay. This direction right here is the V direction. This direction right here 
is the u direction. So what Maya is doing is over the course of the particle's life, it's going in the u direction. Okay, right now um, it doesn't have any specific spot that it's starting here. It's just starting at the very beginning of this, the very zero point, and just going straight across. Okay, when we set up an RGB VPP, what that means is we want to set up basically a random value that our particles will pick from this area and then go straight across. Okay, so what that means, let's go back to our graph, to our ramp, is I'm going to change this instead of a V ramp to a U ramp. Okay, this isn't going to change, but you can see that the picture up here did. So now if I rewind it and hit play, we're getting basically the same graph that we originally had. Okay, but what I want to do is take this red value, and instead of it being just simply red, I can add more colors into this red area so that my particles are born, they pick a certain color, and then as they die, they're going to fade into another color. Okay, so I'm going to go to the red, and it may help you to watch this a couple times and then do it. I'm going to go to the red. It's red. Click the map. And I'm going to click on, this is going to blow your mind, another ramp. Okay. So just so you can see what's happening in this, let me go to my hypershade. And make that bigger. Go to my textures. This is ramp one. I don't need that anymore. That was something else. Here's ramp two. So now if you look at this ramp two, this is where it was just red right here to green to blue. It's red, green, blue to green and blue. And what's happening, let's go back to my marquee. Let's marquee this. Okay, we have our ramp that was going this way then. What I did was instead of this being blue here, I took the exact same ramp uh, and I went the other way with it. So we're essentially getting something like this, but obviously blended in a little bit better. Okay, so we have one ramp going this way, another ramp going that way. So what we can do is go to this ramp and just choose some colors, okay? Just so we can test that this thing is working. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn my interpolation to none on my second ramp. So I'm going to call this beginning of life ramp. Okay, at the beginning of their life, they're going to be a couple colors. So let's pick from a color bank that's kind of like in the same tone. So let's say I wanted kind of like this pastel -y green. Uh, I'm going to go with the pastel green, but then kind of shift it over to the blue. And then pack the pa pick the pastel blue and maybe pick purple. Okay, so when my particles are born, I'm going to go a little more yellowy. My particles are born, they're either going to be pastel yellow, pastel blue, or pastel purple. Okay. Uh, and my ramp 2, which is my end of life ramp, I'm going to delete this middle one by clicking that X. Okay. Now, this color here is going to be what I want them to be at the end. So, that maybe I'll make them kind of a, let's say, bright orangey color. Okay, we can adjust that later, obviously. So this bottom one is our beginning ramp. This top one is just a solid color. Okay, so now let's watch the magic happen. Rewind, hit play. Okay, and so far nothing. Nothing is happening. They're picking the yellow and going right to orange. Okay, well we still haven't set it up yet for them to pick them to pick a random spot along the V okay so we still have to set that up so inside here we have this new attribute called RGB VPP all we need is a creation expression so I'm just gonna right click creation expression and we're basically gonna do this particle shape one dot RGB VPP and we just equal it random from 0 to 1 okay Basically, pick a random spot along that ramp, zero at the bottom, one at the top. So we'll paste it, we'll edit it, we'll wind it, and now we should get some magic. There we go. 
And you see how much better that's looking compared to the other one, which is just like one solid color. Up here we have these nice little uh, blue and then this uh, purpley color, then the yellow color, and then they all kind of fade into this orangey color, but by the time they're dead, they're actually not even really seeing that orange. We just get this nice little blend of that kind of stuff. Okay? So it makes it look super duper awesome, not just super awesome, super duper awesome. Okay? So then let's take that and let's do that same principle, but we'll do it to the opacity. Okay? So I'm going to click on opacity, per particle, add. It doesn't show up, so I hit select, and there it is. So I'm going to right-click, create a ramp. The input U is going to be the particle's age. The input V is going to be the opacity VPP. But since I already have a random value set up, I can just use the RGB VPP. That way I don't have to rewrite that expression. Okay, so particle age for U, RGB VPP for V. And I could use one of my other ramps. This is a new feature of my, I believe. Um, maybe not, but I could pick just using that exact same ramp, but I want to do a new one because I want to use black and white values. I don't really want them to be tied to their own color. Okay. So that's that right click here, edit the ramp. Okay. So the first thing we did was made it a U ramp, delete the middle guy. And then on this bottom white color, I'm going to click the map button and click on another ramp. Okay. And let's look at what that graph is looking like. All right, so this one here is our beginning of life, or end of life, that's right. End of life opacity ramp. We could change the other one to color if we'd like. And then this one is our beginning of life opacity ramp. Okay, and I like to keep the opacities in a grayscale. So I can just drag all these to black, and then I can adjust them to values of white or values of gray. Okay, no interpolation. That'll give us these hard lines here. Okay, and we don't need to do anything fancy, just, you know, we have light gray, medium, like a brighter gray, and then a medium grayish. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my end of life one, and I don't want this to go to total black. I'm gonna go have it go right to um, almost black. Okay, so now we rewind, we hit play, and there they are. And they're actually fading out, you can see. Instead of just popping out of scene, they're actually fading out. And I think what I want to do is take the beginning of life ramp and just bring these values up a little bit more, just so they're a little bit more opaque. I feel like I'm losing a little bit of the brightness of them. There we go. And then I can always come back to the end of life ramp and I can really pull this up so that they're brighter a little bit longer, okay? Or I can actually just grab one of these values here and pull that up so that they only kind of dim right before they die. Okay, so that looks pretty close to being done, all right? We can do a couple other things too to make it look extra fancy. Uh, I'm gonna pull this black one down and I'm gonna add a new color here. And then I'm going to click on the map button for that new color. And I'm going to add a uh, fractal. There we go. Okay, now fractal is black and white. So take a minute to think about what might happen if we take this and our particles go from this white color, these brighter colors, into this dark color. And then they start popping into this range of black and white colors. Okay, I'm actually going to go into that ramp. Just adjust some of the colors in it a little bit more. Oh, that's why I'm bias. There you go. Something like that. Just get a little bit more contrast in there. Okay, so take a minute to think about it. So now if you watch them, they're kind of like twinkling out. Okay, so they kind of like sparkle on their way out instead of just kind of like going away. And I can emphasize that even more just by kind of pulling this to like that. 
Okay, so if I went to something like this, you'll really see kind of like a flickering of light before they start dying. And if I went back to this, uh, not to that, not to my fractal, um, I can probably play with these. There we go. Get a little bit more black and white values in there. That's good there. There we go. You can really see the stuff sparkle. I rewind it. In the video, you might not be able to see it too good, but you can definitely see it on my screen. That's the important scene. They sparkle and they float away. It's magical. All right, so let's save our work. All right, uh, a couple more things just to make this look extra awesome. Uh, we were to render this. Okay, and we render it like that. We don't get the particles. We go to mental ray, we render. Finally, after three hours, just kidding, 48 seconds, uh, you see that we do get the particles and you can see that they're not colored at all. Uh, I don't typically render these kinds of particles outside of mental ray or outside of mental ray or inside mental ray, however you wanna look at it. Uh, but that's what we're getting is this, okay? Um, I'm not sure if that worked, yeah. And if I check my render stats, I don't think there's anything inside here. Number of sample override, nothing there. Render stats, nothing really here. You know, there's nothing there, okay? So what we have to do with this is we have to render two passes. One pass is going to be inside Maya, like that, of just the S. The other pass is going to be inside here using a different renderer, okay? Now, if you click here, there's a hardware renderer, Maya Hardware. There's Maya Hardware 2.0. Um, okay, the hardware one will render both of them, but the hardware one isn't going to have all the fancy stuff that we would associate with this kind of thing, okay? And we went to hardware 2.0. There we go. That one doesn't even show the stuff. All right, so we're going to set this up to render uh, two different things. Also, what I want to do is, as these particles are flying by the S, there's nothing really interacting with it to kind of show, like, you know, the S is getting lit up by the particles. So I'm going to go to my create lights point light. There he is. I'm going to hold down C and middle drag along the curve to get him to go back there. And then I'm going to go to the outliner. I'm going to click on the point light, control click the emitter, and hit P to parent it. So now the light, the point light, is attached to my emitter. So that as this thing goes around like that, I can see a little light right there. I can even emphasize this a bit more, just taking the intensity of that light up some. Okay. Now you don't want to freak people out by having it just on there, your only light, because as it goes behind it, you won't see anything. Okay, so I'm going to create uh, just a couple things here. Let's create a plane. Make sure we're not cutting through. There we go. Make it big. There we go. And then I'm going to make uh, just another light inside here, maybe just an area light. I'll hit T so I can aim it. Uh, hold down C2 and I can just snap it right to that. There we go. All right. Render this. There we go. We probably need some shadows in here, so we can actually render through mental ray. And just ignore the fact that the particles are going to be in there and they're going to be in grayscale. Sure, what that line is. Let me hide my particles and see. 
sometimes you know my particles just interact and display weird things. Well, it's my light. My light is just showing off something weird. Let me go to my point light here. It does have shadows on, but the shadows might be really, really rough. So let me go to mental ray. Not mental ray. Let me go to shadows. Use ray trace. Yep. See that light ray is just too small. So let's take this up to let's say four, five. Now we'll take our shadow rays up to ten. Now what that should do is just get rid of that line, this harsh line here. It's just a shadow from our S. So that should kind of spread it out so we don't really see it. And that's exactly what it does. There we go. That's beautiful. Okay. We can also color our light. So here's the colors that were listed there. So we can pick purple or yellow or whatever. If I go with something like that, just because it's kind of like more of the medium. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so we have a light here. So let's set up. Now I don't want to do this as if I was to go through uh, and I did a Mia on here and I did this as a super chromy reflective thing. Obviously my particles aren't going to show up in there because we're not rendering them through the same type of thing. So I want to keep this as a matte object. So I can still do a Mia if I wanted to. There it is. Uh, and I can pick a color for this. I actually didn't mind the gray. I think I just want to go with more of a bluey kind of gray. It's kind of purpley. Oh, maybe that's good. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of my reflection, take my glossiness down, do a little render on that and see how it looks. All right, that looks cool. Let's take our ground and we'll add a material to that. Another Mia. I'm not doing linear workflow with this because I don't need this to be photorealistic. It's just me having something in the scene. Now let me grab that blue and I'm just going to slide this over to orange. Let me get two different colors in here. Okay, and then this is reflective, obviously, so I have to turn that off. And then my glossiness will probably have to go down as well. Let's take the glossiness down. There we go. So that'll work for us right there. Okay, so now we run into another issue though, is that as I rewind this and I hit, I'm gonna turn our particles back on, as I hit play, you can see that the particles are going through the ground. Okay, obviously it's not gonna look realistic having them go through the ground. So I'm gonna click on my particles, click on the ground, and then under my dynamics menu, under particles, I'm gonna go to make collide. Okay, resilience, bounciness, no bouncy. Uh, maybe a little bit of bounce, maybe like 0 0.05. And a little bit of friction, 0 .0, say 0 0.1. We have more friction than we have that. Offset is how far off the surface they're going to be. So I'm going to go 0 0.001 on that one. So create. So now when we hit play, they're going through, but they're not going all the way through. Okay? They're kind of hitting the ground and staying there. So I'm going to grab the particles again. Or the ground again. Go to the geo connector, and this is where I can play with these things. 0 0.01 for my offset. There we go. So now they're going to intersect as much. Uh, maybe a little bit more friction. I don't like how slidey they are. There we go. That looks cool. Okay, and I'm also going to do the same thing with my uh, letter S. So grab the particles, shift click letter S. Make collide. I don't even know if they collide, but why not, right? It's not going to hurt anything. 
create rewind play. Yeah, I don't even think they touched the uh, letter S. Maybe right there they might have. Yeah, very cool. All right, and then of course I want to tweak things. You know, I want to go back through the, all those settings that we changed, and then really refine what this is looking like. I want to go to my scales uh, expression, and I want to say, okay, well I want some of these to be a little bit bigger. So maybe they're at 0.3, yeah, 0.07. All right, so now they're a bit bigger. <clears throat> Maybe I want a little bit more twist in there, so I can go to my twist expressions and maybe make my random twist here. Maybe let's make that eight. Negative eight and eight. Zero to three sixty is gonna be fine. <clears throat> That's gonna be fine there. Let's edit this. Go to runtime before dynamics. My scale maybe we'll make it 0.98. Let's see what that looks like. No, there you go. Add another nine in there. Might keep them a little bit bigger, a little bit longer. I think it does. There we go. And then maybe even add a little bit more particles by going to the emitter. Right clicking, top one, 600 going into my <clears throat> particles, excuse me, going to the inherit factor, which is probably good, maybe not, let's go to 0.5, let's see what 0.5 gives us. I don't want them to go bananas. Yeah, I think that's bananas. Let's go back to 0.35, let's see what that gets us. Yeah, it's not a lot. I think 0.4 is probably good there. Uh, we can keyframe these things too. Like I can say, okay, at this point here, I'm going to take that inherent factor and set a key, and then at 148, that inherent factor is going to be up to 0.8. Set another key. Okay, and then what that'll do is it'll just have a little bit more um, effect at the top. So here it goes. You can see how far that's going to go now as opposed to the other way. So we have options that we can play with if we decided we wanted to. Okay, there it is. All right. So now what we need to do is once we're satisfied with this 115%, we're going to save it. Of course, we always save it. And then we're going to go and grab the particles. And under the particle solver menu, we're going to create a particle disk cache. So I'm rewinding. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, go ahead and create this as my name. And then I'm going to cache the selected because that's all I have hit create and now it's going through and writing out the position data for each one of my particles okay so even though we can't really see them too good they're there and as I click and drag now so you can see I can click and drag my particles are locked to these positions if I don't want that anymore and I want to be able to simulate things then I need to turn that off okay and what I mean by that is let's say I go in here and I change uh, I want more particles so I go in here and I type 6,000 I hit rewind, I hit play, I'm getting the same exact amount of particles out of this, okay, as I did before. This 6,000 is invalid, okay. I have to go to solvers, uh, edit over sampling or cache settings, and then I have to say, don't use the particle disk cache. And then I rewind it, I play it, and now I'm going to get 6,000 particles. And you can see how slow this is going with 6,000 particles. Probably a poor choice to go to 6,000. All right, so now we're back to 600. And then I can just go back in here, go back to my uh, edit over sampling or cache settings, tell it to use the cache, and now we're back to using the cache. Okay? With the cache off, I can't click and drag. It just freaks out. With the cache on, there it is, perfect. Every single time it's gonna be the exact same thing. So now I save, okay? Now what that means is if we go into our folder, five thousand folders later, if I go into render data, 
Nope. If I go into cache, which they moved it to, under particles, here is my particle disk cache. Okay. Um, and there's all of this data here that it's written out for my particles. Okay, so if I ever back up my stuff, I want to make sure I back up uh, that cache folder as well, because now we have data in there that we would need in order to render this on another computer. Because even though we don't see it, if we render this on two separate computers, we might get two different results. Okay, they might be slight, but once you put them together, it'll be really obvious. Okay, we could also go through and edit the curve if we wanted to. Also, that's another thing we could do. But then we have to turn our cache off, resim it, and then play with it. Okay. And right now, if I just to show you, I'm going to save this just to make sure I don't screw up. Uh, if I deleted the curve, if I deleted the emitter, if I deleted the gravity and the turbulence, that's all the particle stuff, and I hit play, you see that the particles are still going. Okay, I'm still able to view and animate and move the particles around. <clears throat> regardless of the fact that all the stuff that you used to create it is gone, okay? Because it's just simmed. It's just reading that data from the disk. Right, I think I have everything back. Curve point. Yes. Okay. So just for fun, I'll save that as in case I messed up. Number two. All right. So now let's get to the rendering part. So let's go to render settings. Uh, not render settings, but our render ball. And let's set up a camera here. So we can use perspective or another camera. Doesn't matter. Sometimes I'm just too lazy to create a new camera. Okay, so let's create it like that. Let's make sure that we can see all the stuff that's in the view, which we can. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I have my camera selected and set a key. Go up to frame 200, little rotation, set another key. Okay, and then maybe I'll come into the middle here and just pull us back oops, slightly. Okay, I'm going to go into my graph editor, frame this, and if I were to look at one of these like that, we have slow in, fast, slow out. Okay, just like in my other classes, I don't like that, so I'm just going to grab these end ones and make them linear. Okay, so I just grab the endpoints here, shift, grab the endpoints there, made it linear, and then we're good. So I hit play just to make sure we're still good. The cool thing is that if it goes too slow, we can always go back into like post and change it. If it goes too fast, then we can't really do much with it at that point. All right, so that's probably good. I like the way that looks. Uh, so let's go to our render settings and we'll set this up and call this letter and uh, ground rendering. We'll render these out as ifs, name.number.extension, 1 to 200, perspective camera, HD 540, cool. Default stuff, basic stuff that we've already set up. Uh, quality, maybe 1. We'll set the unified sampling just to make sure we get some nice results. Uh, and I'm going to turn off my particles. So there they are. I don't want to make, I want to make sure that they're not on during this. So when I render it, I just get my S letter and I get the ground. Now, one thing I'm going to have to change also uh, is if I go to my outliner, oops, I have my point light inside here. Which doesn't seem to be moving with my emitter anymore. That's what happens when you break stuff. Look at that. Right, let's go back to my emitter. What did I do? And set zero. I broke it when I was doing and undoing stuff. There we go. So now my emitter and other stuff goes with it. Okay. So my light, uh, when it gets to the top, obviously we have to stop it. Oops, it's not 200, it's 150. There we go. 
All right, so it gets to the top at 150, it should basically die off. Okay, so intensity, key selected, intensity at 151, zero. I'm actually going to do a little neat thing here. I'm just going to set a keyframe at 140 with this at 2. And then we're going to go up to like 4. So basically we're just going to get brighter, 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 then poosh, it goes off. So that's just you don't have to do that. Just key it on, key it off if you want. All right. So that's what we have here is we just have our light. animating behind us. Okay, and two might be too bright. That looks like it's crazy bright in the front. Let's go back to our graph editor for that light. And I'm just going to knock these values down. I'm just highlighting them and then with the move tool just scooting it back down. There we go. That's better. Okay. All right. Cool. So that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's good. There. We're saving. Save. All right. So now we can go to rendering. Then we go to render batch render. Uh, whatever here. Batch render and close. And then this is going to shoot through and do um, a batch render of just that letter and the ground. Okay. That's all we want to do. Okay, so I'm going to just cancel that so we can do the next part. So the next part of this is that we're going to go to Window Rendering Editors, Hardware Render Buffer. This is another render window, but it's for particles. So I'm going to turn my particles on. I'm going to turn off this little ball thing because it doesn't need that. All right, and we're going to go to Render Attributes. And this one has its own render attributes or render settings. So this one we're going to call Sprite for animation. That's fine. Uh, name dot number dot extension. Our frame range, 1 to 200. Here is our size. It's defaulted to NTSC, so we'll just hit select. And we'll see if 960 by 540 is in here. Yep, right here. HD 540. Or you could just type in, this is how you change them, you just type it in. 960 540, 1.77. Okay, and then this is just the name. All right. Uh, alpha source, we're going to use a hardware alpha. Okay, basically it's going to just try to figure out where the alpha is. We could also use luminance, but, you know, is, let's have the hard, the alpha written into it. And if we don't use it, we can just use luminance. No big deal. All right, uh, lighting mode. We'll use all lights. Uh, let's see, smooth shaded, that's fine line smoothing, full image resolution, and geometry mask. So this is the important one, geometry mask. I'll render it like this. You see we get the ground, we get the S, we get the particles. I turn geometry mask on, and this is the preview button. And then we don't get that, okay? But you can see how it's cutting it out. That's the important part is that it's cutting that part out of there. And you can see those particles are gorgeous. All right, let's make them a little bit more gorgeous. Uh, let's do this actually as uh, V01. Okay, we're gonna do several versions of this. All right, the multi-pass uh, options here we'll play with also. Okay, so I'm just gonna rewind this. I'm gonna go to render and say render sequence. This here is rendering. It's going through and rendering out each one of these frames. Done. So now we go to flipbooks. We go to here. And we can see what these things are going to look like, and you can see how beautiful our work is. Okay, we can check the timing. We can play with it even more, but I think that's I think that's pretty nice. Okay, the next part we're going to play with. I'm going to go to the middle-ish frames here. I'm going to go to the multi-pass rendering, and this is going to be VO2. Uh, and if I hit the render button in this instance, what it's going to do is it's going to do three different passes right now it's set to three so it's going to be three different passes and then this can kind of blur these together to make it look nice and smooth okay so i can do up to 36 passes hit the render button nothing's really going to change at all in the same spot 
But if I go to motion blur, and let's say I put this to one, now it's gonna take 36 passes over one frame. And then we get this slightly fuzzier look that kind of blends the colors together a little bit nicer, okay? So let's go back to the beginning. I don't think we need 36, let's just do 16. <clears throat> let's go to render. We'll say render sequence. Now this one's gonna take a little bit longer because it's actually going through um, one whole frame and breaking it up into 16 pieces and then rendering each one of those and then putting it together. We'll pause until we get back. And it's just finishing up and we're done. All right, so let's go to flipbooks. So there's VO1, this is the first one we watched. There's VO2. Okay, I'm gonna keep that one open there and maybe I can open up a second one. I can, success. Okay, let's go here, about there. Okay, so you can see here, you can probably see here, here we have nice crystal clear detail. Here we're kind of like, it's motion blurred, it's a little bit softer. But when we put these two things together, it's gonna look super duper awesomer, okay? We can also look at the alpha channel here and see that the alpha channel has been written in. All right, but if we don't wanna use the alpha channel, we can wanna generate our own, we can do that. And the same thing here. This one is nice and sharp. Obviously that one is gonna be motion blurred and softer. Okay, close that, close that. Oops. All right, so once we have our two passes there, so we have one pass crystal clear, one pass with some stuff on here, and just to show you, you can actually go like over 10 frames, render this out, and you'll get this really blurry kind of effect. So if you want to have like maybe a third pass uh, or something like that, you could do that, or maybe even over five frames, okay? And then basically, let's say you had a waterfall. Seeing the individual particles of a waterfall doesn't really help you but seeing them kind of blurred together and that waterfall movement, that could help you kind of get the look out of a particle or of water falling. All right, so when you're done, you're gonna have two renders of these <clears throat> and you'll have one render of this and that, or of this and that and the light together, okay? So I'm gonna have a separate video of just putting all that stuff together. I think your mind's probably blown already. So uh, watch it, do it, and then get ready for